I received an email regarding LCD PROC, which is a very mature Linux framework for displaying system information on LCD displays. It allows you to very rapidly bust out bar charts and large fonts, which would normally take a lot of time to code. This tutorial will show you how to set up and run LCD PROC on a Raspberry Pi. I'll also demonstrate how to extend LCD PROC's capabilities using Python and make a simple temperature, humidity, monitor, and graph. I've had this Crystal Fonts 4x20 character LCD display in my parts bin for a long time. It's USB, so no wiring is required. You just plug it into the Pi. There's a dip switch on the back to set the baud rate. I found that 19200 works the best, and I did encounter problems at slower speeds. For this tutorial, you'll need at least version 0.5.7, so I'll use wget to download. Please check SourceForge to see if a newer version is online. If so, you would change 0.5.7 to the newer version number. After downloading, extract the tar and cd to the folder. There are many configuration options available. Use the dash help parameter with configure to get a list. LCD Proc supports a ton of displays, therefore there are a lot of drivers. I'm only going to install the ones I need, which are Crystal Fonts and HD44780. The latter allows connecting an LCD display directly to the Pi's GPIO. Also, there's an all option if you want to go ahead and install every driver. The enable seamless hbars argument allows horizontal bars to be drawn without gaps, assuming your display supports no gaps. After configure, use make and make install. I sped up the video because this takes a few minutes. LCD proc is a client server application. The server daemon handles all commands to the LCD display. Clients connect to the server and submit screens to be displayed. Multiple clients can connect simultaneously to the server, which will cycle through the uploaded screens. Before starting the server, there are settings that need to be specified. The USB port number for the Crystal Fonts display can be obtained using dmessage grep tty. tty USB 0 is returned. This could vary depending on your setup. The install paths can vary, so the whereas command is used to determine the location of the LCDD server configuration file, which is in user local etsy. Another where is shows the driver path is in user local lib lcd proc and also the client settings file path which we'll need later. I open the lcd proc server settings file using nano. In the top section I'll specify the driver path that we just found. I'm using an older crystal fonts model 634 so I'll set the driver to cfonts. For newer crystal fonts displays you'll probably need to use the cfonts packet driver. When the LCD proc service starts, the display will show a home page type screen that lists the total clients and total screens. I'll uncomment server screen to off. It'll still come on at startup, but as soon as the client uploads a screen, it'll be excluded from the cycle. Next, there are specific settings to the CFONTS driver. Devices where we plug in the USB port we found earlier. I'll set contrast to 560 and brightness to 750. Speed is 19200 to match the baud rate of the display and new firmware is set to yes because the firmware on my display is greater than 2.0. Finally I go to the HD44780 section, change the connection type to Raspberry Pi, and set the size to 16x2. I'll save the changes and exit Nano. LCD Proc comes with a client that's also called LCD Proc. It has 16 screens of system info. You can enable and tweak them by editing the LCD Proc CONF file, some of the screens include CPU usage, memory, hard drive space, battery levels, network stats, clocks, etc. Active to terms of a screen will be displayed. I'll turn some on and off. For network, I'll change the interface to my Wi-Fi dongle, and I'll also enable the optional transfer screen. You can also control the screens with command line switches. Check out the LCD Proc website for documentation, uh, lcdprocomnipotent.net. I'll save my changes, and the client is now ready to go. Okay, now I start the LCD proc server by using sudo lcdd. At this point you should see the server screen. If you installed with apt get installed, then lcdd would be a service and you would use sudo service lcdd to start instead. Use sudo lcd proc to start the client. The LCD display now cycles through a wealth of information. A CPU bar graph, a large font clock, network transfer rates, network transfer sizes, memory usage and availability, disk usage, and space. The LCD proc client is great if you just need system info, and there are other third-party clients available too, such as MP3 player displays, RSS feeds, Kodi, and much more. 
However, with Python, we can easily create our own custom screens. I'll be using a Python library, also called LCD Proc, by Jingleman Sweep. First, I'll install Python setup tools and make sure I'm in my home directory. Then use git clone to ensure I have the latest version. Then sudo easy install LCD proc. I'm going to use a DHT22 temperature humidity sensor, so I'll quickly install the Adafruit DHT22 library. I have another video specifically for the DH22, so I'll do this quickly. After rebooting, I'll open idle using GKSU to ensure I have root privileges. The LCD proc Python library provides the following methods for adding elements to an LCD display screen. The elements are referred to as widgets and include add string widget, which lets you position text strings. A title widget displays a title at the top of the display with blocks on both sides. Horizontal and vertical bars, which can be used for charts and graphs. Icons, such as hearts and arrows. A scroller for displaying long text in a scrolling fashion. And a large number widget for displaying numbers in a font height equal to the height of the display. I created a new program and imported the Adafruit DHT library the LCD proc library, and sleep. An LCD proc server is instantiated and the session started. You can set the debug to true if you want to view the telnet communications between the client and server. I'll add two screens, one for temperature and one for humidity. They both will display for three seconds. Heartbeat is a small blinking heart at the top right corner of the display, which I'll disable. The add number widget is used to add a large font digit. I add four digits to each screen. Since the numbers take up the height of the display, I only need to specify the horizontal X position. Value could be 0 to 9, or 10 for a dash. Add string widget places a decimal point in position X, Y. I'll use lowercase o's for the decimal points. Just to be thorough, I'll add the capability for minus temperatures. Two underscore string widgets will comprise the minus symbol. For the degree symbol, I'll use two side-by-side -side parentheses. For the percent symbol, I'll use two lowercase o's with two slashes. Here is the main loop. It starts by pulling the DHT22 sensor using the DHT read retry method on GPIO4 and then checks to make sure the reading is valid. The temperature is converted from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Then the code checks if the temperature is minus and displays the minus symbol if necessary by using the set text method with underscores or spaces to clear it. Next, the numeric readings are converted to lists of digits formatted to four digits with one decimal place. Each entry will correspond to a digit on the display. Since the decimal places are fixed on the display and already drawn, I'll pop them out of the lists. A for loop is used with the setValue method to set the value of each digit on the display. The main loop ends with a catch for bad readings and will repeat every six seconds. The finally statement ensures that the screens will be deleted when the program exits. Here are the results, a large temperature readout followed by humidity. The display will continue to cycle between the screens until the program is stopped. It would be possible to have other clients connect concurrently and add additional screens. That's a cool benefit of the server-client model. Next I'll do a demonstration of a temperature bar graph. Please note that big numbers, h-bars, and v-bars all use custom character sets, so only one of these types per screen is allowed. The next program starts the same as the previous, with the necessary imports and LCD server instantiation. I'll add a single screen for the temperature graph. The getServerInfo method is used to return the LCD screen width and cell width. Max length is the maximum number of pixels available for the horizontal bar graph. This program will scale the graph to fit different displays. Ticks are the values along the bottom of the graph which will be limited to a temperature range from 60 to 100 Fahrenheit. Tick spacing is the space between ticks based on the screen width. A for loop inserts the appropriate spacing so the ticks fit the screen and add string widget displays the ticks. The graph will be enclosed by two brackets which are inserted using add string widget. The add hbar widget method is used to add the horizontal temperature graph to the display. The main loop starts the same as the previous program by pulling the DHT22, checking the readings, and converting the temperature. If the temperature is less than 60, the graph is cleared. The set length method is past zero. If the temperature is greater than 100, the graph is just set to the maximum width. Otherwise, the bar graph is scaled to the appropriate size based on temperature and screen width. The program loops every 6 seconds and the screen is deleted upon exit. On the crystal fonts display, the bar graph shows the temperature in the low 70s. Since I coded the program to scale to the display, we can now switch to another display without changing the Python code. Here's the default GPL pinout for hooking up an LCD display using LCD proc. 
You can override this in the configuration file if you prefer. On my breadboard I have a 16x2 blue LCD display. Data 7 goes to GPIO 18, Data 6 to GPIO 23, Data 5 to 24, Data 4 to 25, Enable goes to GPIO 8, RS goes to GPIO 7. As always, make sure RW is grounded. I'll quickly hook up the DHT22. I have other tutorials dedicated to LCD displays and the DHT22 that go into more details if you're interested. That's all it takes in terms of the wiring. I'll open the LCDD configuration file and change the driver from CFONTS to HD44780. This will switch from the Crystal Fonts display to the LCD connected to the Pi's GPIO. I'll stop and restart the LCD Proc server. Now when I run the temperature graph program, it displays on the 16x2 LCD display. Unlike the Crystal Fonts display, there are gaps in the horizontal bars because this display doesn't support the seamless H bars, but it still looks good. I hope you found this video useful. You can support this channel by subscribing or leaving a like. I finally got around to renovating my website, rototron.info, and I've added a notebook tab that has summaries and supporting material for my tutorials, including all the code, so please check it out. And thanks for watching.